Today we're going to look at the kinematic equations of motion and you're really going to utilize these just about every day for the, the next three weeks or so. So let's go over just kind of the basics of them. First of all, a uh, little bit of review. Remember the mathematical definitions of velocity is essentially how quickly the distance is changing. So if you're traveling at 20 meters per second, it means every second you'll traverse distance of 20 meters. And if you're traveling at 50 meters per second, you would be traveling a distance of 50 meters. On the other hand, acceleration is how quickly that velocity is changing. So if you're traveling at 20 meters per second per second, after one second, you'll now be traveling a speed of 20 meters per second. If you're going 50 meters per second per second, after one second, you'd be now moving at a velocity of 50 meters per second. You'd be going faster. Now the distance, how far you traverse over that time, well, that's what we're going to kind of look at today. How would you figure out that in, um, if you know the acceleration? Now these can be used both for instantaneous and average values. So the kinematic equations, before we look at them, let me just make a disclaimer. These can only be used if and only if the acceleration is constant. So for example, if you're, um, if you're in a car and you hit the gas, let's say your foot's at kind of the same level the entire time. So you're accelerating at a constant rate, let's say 5 meters per second squared, for example that would be an example of constant acceleration. If on the other hand your foot is pushing harder or softer into the gas, so maybe you're going 5 meters per second squared or 10 meters per second squared or maybe even you hit the brakes and you're slowing down, if that's the case and your acceleration is not constant. If that happens you're going to have to separate the problems into smaller steps. Now today we're not going to look at those more complicated problems, we'll get into those into the future. So here's the four kinematics equations. Um, go ahead and write these down. And these are going to be used, uh, again, throughout this um, unit and actually the next one. Um, just a couple of definition of what these some of these symbols mean. So VO means the initial velocity. VF means the final velocity. Delta D is our displacement. A is our acceleration. And T is our time. So go ahead and write these down, push pause if you need to, and we're going to go ahead and utilize them in an example problem. So here's the first problem we're going to look at. Let's imagine we have a car that's traveling, hits the brakes, and stops. Okay, relatively straightforward problem. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a couple calculations. We're going to figure out the deceleration of the car. So to set up these problems, what you're going to want to do, actually the first step, I would really recommend is to sketch out a picture so you can visualize what's happening. So we have our car, right? There's my little car. And it's traveling at a certain speed. We'll say it's traveling at 28, right, meters per second. Uh, he's going to hit the brakes. So he's going to slow down, right, and stop. And at this point, if he stopped, he's traveling, well, he's traveling at zero meters per second because he stopped. And he's traveled some distance here. Okay, we can call this delta d, the distance. And the time that we know that it took him to do that is five seconds. So once you understand visually what's happening, the next step that you're really going to want to do is write down kind of what you know. And I've already done that here, but let me do it a little bit more formally. So the five variables we always have, I'm going to write them down, are is v initial final, acceleration, displacement, and time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull out what we know from either the problem here or actually better yet from the, um, the drawing that we made. Pull out what we know and just kind of write these down. And I usually I refer to these as the givens of the problem, what's been given to you. Okay, so first of all, 28 meters per second, this represents the initial velocity. So let's write that down, 28. Um, t, we know the time here, that's 5 seconds. Okay, we know that we stop, right? So stopping is telling us our final velocity, that's going to be 0. And the acceleration is unknown, in fact that's what we're finding here, the deceleration. 
and the displacement is also known, unknown, and that's what we're going to find in B. The key number to remember here is 3. You're looking to find 3 givens. Once you know 3 givens, you should have no problem solving the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to look back. So the first one is let's find the acceleration. So notice we know the initial velocity of the final and the time. We're looking for the acceleration. So you want to go look back at your equations, and you want to find what's the equation that has those four things. Which one has V initial, or V final, acceleration, and time? And if you notice, it's going to be this first one right here. This one, we have all those values. And that should be the one that should work for us. Let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So V final equals V, oops, V initial plus A T. Then I'm just going to go ahead and make those substitutions. So our V final here was 0. V initial was 28. And our acceleration is unknown. And our time is 5. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do a little bit of algebra here. We'll subtract 28 from both sides. That gives us negative 28 equals a f times 5, or a equals negative 28 fifths. Now we'll usually go ahead and write these in decimal form. So this is going to be what? Negative, oops, negative 5.6. Don't forget your units. Remember, this is. Um, acceleration, so the units are going to be meters per second squared. Okay? All right, so that's the first problem, negative uh, 5.6 meters per second squared. Let's go ahead and figure out how far it traveled. Remember, for that, we're looking for a displacement. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to another slide, so I'm out of space here. So notice here, let's go back. So notice here, we know. Um, v initial, V final, we actually know A at this point. We know our A is also negative 5.6. However, when solving these, you want to try to choose an equation that doesn't use this value. Remember, this is a calculated value, so number one, if you got it wrong, then you're going to get the next problem wrong. Number two, um, sometimes, and it's not true here, but sometimes you're going to have some rounding issues. Or maybe this is like 5.23162, and you round it off, and that's just going to increase the amount of error in your problem. So let's see if we can find an equation that uses V initial, V final, delta D, which is what we're live looking for, and the time. So if we go back here, essentially we're looking for the acceleration that does not have acceleration. That's another way of looking at it, because that's the one we don't want to use. And if you notice, this equation right here is the equation that does not have acceleration. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use that equation to solve it. Maybe I do have space over here. Let's see if we can do it. So the equation for this is delta D equals 1 half VO plus VF times T. Okay, let's just go ahead and make the substitution. So delta D is what we're looking for. One half. The initial the number was 28. And V final was zero. And time was five seconds. Okay, one thing I do want you to notice here, look at this, just this term here, one half VO plus VF. So we went from 28 to zero. So when we add 28 plus 0 and then take 1 half, we're just going to get 14. Well, what is 14? Well, notice 14 is that average velocity between 28 and 0. And that's all this is, in fact, is finding an average velocity. And so you can do it that way as well, just kind of conceptually, and say, oh, the average is 14 meters per second. We multiply that times 5 seconds. That's going to go ahead and give me my distance or displacement. So 14 times 5 is going to give us, what's that, 70? Okay, 
and that'll be the distance that we travel, 70 meters. So I'd like you to try one on your own now. Go ahead and press pause and see if you can solve this problem on your own. And then when you're finished, come back, see the answer, and hopefully you got it right. So push pause now. So here I'm back, and I'm going to go ahead and solve the problem at this point. So again, let's draw a picture of our car. This time it starts from rest. He's going to speed up this way. And this time we know the distance he travels is 50 meters. And we know the acceleration over that time is 4. All right, so let's write the givens. I'm just going to kind of write the givens a little bit quicker this time. So our initial velocity, it says it starts from rest. That's going to be a hint that it's starting at 0. We know the acceleration in this problem was 4. And we know the displacement here is 50. So we're looking for the time first. So again, you're going to look back at your kinematic equations. You're going to see which one has this, 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 and this. Another way of looking at it is which one is missing the unknown. And the unknown in this case would be the final or the one that you, you don't know and you're not looking for. So the equation that's going to work for us in this one is going to be V, oops, not that one, delta D equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. All right, so we know the distance, that's 50 meters. We know the initial velocity, that's zero. Now zero times whatever is going to be zero, so we can just leave that alone. We're going to go plus one half, the acceleration is four, and that's going to be times t squared. All right, do the algebra. We have 50, one half times four is two, so we divide by two, that's going to give us 25. 25 is equal to t squared, so t equals five seconds. Okay, so that's letter A. Let's go ahead and solve B right here. Again, if possible, try to solve it without using this, just in case you made a mistake. So this is five seconds. So let's use the equation that doesn't have time in it. So take a look at the four equations. The one that does not have time in it, you should know this to be this one, Vf squared equals Vo squared plus 2a delta d. So our v final is what we're looking for, so we'll just leave that as vf squared. Let's make the substitutions. This is going to be 0 plus 2 times our acceleration, which is 4, times our displacement, which is 50. All right, so we get vf squared equals 2 times 4 is 8 times 50 is, what's that, 400. And then don't forget to square root. So we're going to square root both sides here. And we're going to get VF equal to 20. Okay, and that's how you solve these problems.